Hey there, Commanders! Today's lesson is one which requires a great deal of patience, and the Inara external tool for best effectiveness. If you have not set up an Inara account, I highly recommend doing so before continuing. Note that all engineering materials are available to find without regard to the number or types of engineers which a given player has unlocked. Starship engineering is a long-winded and very tedious process, both to learn and undertake. While there have been improvements to the system over the last few years, one inescapable aspect of engineering is the need to go out and scavenge materials. These resources are divided into three types, which are then further divided up based on category and rarity. Raw materials are the unrefined mineral and ore samples, which can be collected by an SRV or during asteroid mining operations. These samples do not need to be processed by a refinery and do not take up any cargo space when collected. They can only be exchanged at a material trader who deals in raw materials or used in synthesis and engineering blueprints. Data materials are information artifacts, which can be recovered from various public terminals and data repositories scattered throughout the bubble. Like raw materials, these data samples do not take up cargo space and cannot be exchanged except through engineers or material traders. Manufactured materials are what we will be searching for when hunting for high-grade emissions. These rare signal sources appear randomly in populated systems, and typically contain one or two different types of material at grade 4 or 5, which can be harvested. The exact material available depends on conditions derived from the background simulation, and are influenced by things like superpower alliance, economy, faction state, and population. For example, imperial shielding will only appear in systems where the controlling faction is allied with the Empire, Core Dynamics composites only appear in systems controlled by the Federation, and improvised components only appear in independent or alliance systems where a faction has entered the state of civil unrest. This means that certain materials are more difficult to find because their specific trigger conditions are more rare. By far, the most difficult high-grade materials to find are pharmaceutical isolators which only appear in an independent or alliance system with a faction state experiencing an outbreak. Effectively hunting different high-grade emissions requires understanding what conditions trigger the material you are looking for, and then working to find as many systems with that matching condition as possible. High-grade material hunting is very much a quantity game, where the odds of finding what you want increase the more systems you are able to visit. This is where Inara becomes your best friend, as it provides a tool tailored specifically for the task. From the desktop version of the Inara homepage, highlight the Data tab, and then select Search Nearest. Select the Star Systems tab inside the tool, and then fill out the form. This is where knowing what you are looking for starts to matter a lot. Thankfully, Inara also has a list of all the materials you can find and their location attributes. In a separate browser tab, open up the Inara homepage and then select the Data tab. This time, look over to the list of links under the Engineering category and select the Components link. This page lists all engineering materials in the game, including those used for spacesuits, which are not relevant here. To filter the list, select the Manufactured tab located on the list header. From here, click the Grade Cost column header twice to sort all remaining manufactured materials by rarity. If done correctly, you should see all Grade 5 rarity items at the top of the list. These materials are what we will find in high-grade emissions, with a few exceptions that we can cover later. If you have progressed in the engineering system enough to have access to Grade 5 blueprints, then, odds are, you will know what you are missing on this list. If you are just getting started in engineering, these materials might not have come up as requirements yet. But don't worry. 
these higher grade materials are still extremely relevant to you by way of the material traders. All materials are sorted into categories within their material type and arranged by rarity with the most common appearing on the left. So all materials related to shielding sort together on a row from a rarity of 1 to 5, where a high number is more rare. While we can trade any material for any other of the same type, the most efficient trades are those which happen within the same category. The trade system is weighted on a 3 to 1 ratio favoring rare materials. This means it takes three low rarity materials to exchange for a single material of the next highest rarity. It also means that if you have a lot of rare materials, it's possible and extremely advantageous to exchange these materials down for more of a less common one. This trade advantage multiplies with additional steps down that you take from a maximum of five. Stepping down results in a single grade five material exchanging for about 80 of a grade one material. If you are going to go out and hunt for manufactured engineering resources, the most time efficient way to do this is by hunting exclusively high grade emissions and then exchanging them for lower grade materials. Do not take this to mean that high grade hunts are a fast process. Harder to find materials are likely to take many hours of effort to turn results, since the system is highly dependent on random events. There is no way to control when and where the exact high grade emission you are looking for will appear. Here again, the material trader becomes a valuable resource by way of cross category trading. This form of material trading occurs any time that one material is exchanged for another material that is not in the same category row. Doing this incurs a stiff penalty that makes these trades much less efficient, but still better than hunting exclusively for the hard-to-find items, like improvised components and pharmaceutical isolators. Unfortunately, these two items can often be the bane of determined commanders, as their trigger conditions are so rare as to be impractical to search for alone. When hunting high-grade materials, I have found it far more productive to target the more abundant high-grade materials, of which Imperial Shielding is the easiest. All you need to do is fly around Imperial space, and you will find a bunch of these emissions, since it's possible to locate roughly a hundred per every hour and a half of effort. You can do something similar in federal space with core dynamics composites, but may end up collecting a bunch of grade 4 proprietary composites along the way, which is not quite as efficient to deal with if you are later in the game. New players who may need these specific resources should definitely give consideration to collecting them, as they are key to some armor engineering blueprints. I recommend using the economical route mode on the galaxy map, as it will maximize the number of systems you hit while traveling from point to point, greatly increasing the chance you stumble into a system with more high-grade emissions. Note that, with a properly fitted travel ship, it's possible to integrate high-grade material hunting into your normal travel activities, further spreading out the grind between things you like or need to do. When you fill your storage to capacity, once again, Inara comes to the rescue. From the search nearest tool, select the Stations tab and then find the Materials Trader button at the bottom of the form. Selecting this button will auto-generate a list of stations with Materials Traders, using Seoul as the default central location, or your last known location, if you use a position reporting tool like ED Market Connector. Be sure to manually update your location by selecting the Change Search button if you find that it does not match where you currently are. When trading materials from full, I typically trade excess materials down to about 50 units. Be sure to trade down within a category first to load all the lower bays before starting to trade across categories, unless you have a specific material need. When trading across categories, it's best to trade for exactly the thing you are looking for, regardless of its rarity or category, from the most abundant high-grade material you currently have. 
You can still exchange other materials around in a pinch, but will suffer worse trade efficiency. Any ship with a collector limpet controller and a cargo bay is capable of hunting for high-grade emissions, though I recommend adding a fuel scoop and a supercruise assist module to reduce logistical headaches and provide ample opportunity for breaks. It's possible for a high-grade emission to spawn hundreds of thousands of light seconds away, so it's nice to hand off control to the assist unit and do some chores or use the bathroom while your ship flies out to distant points. 64 tons of cargo bay capacity works best for high-grade material scavenging, as an extremely successful day will still require about an hour to drain all limpets from a given bay. This helps break up gameplay into manageable chunks, providing an easy goal to hit during a session, and helping prevent you from losing track of too much time. I also recommend having a good podcast or streaming service open on your phone or another monitor, as this is not very engaging gameplay and is likely to bore even the most dedicated of players. I managed to listen to basically every episode of South Park doing stuff like this in Elite, so be prepared for a long ride or have a way to break things up. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.